Hi, my name's David. I own and operate Country Whatnot Gardens just outside of Rochester, Indiana, which is about an hour south of the Michigan State Line. And right behind me is another green and gold bamboo variety. This is Phyllostachy serosicata spectabilis, and we can see it has a yellow comb with a green sulcus. So since it's the sulcus that is, it is green, that means the stripe alternates from side to side up the comb. I don't know if I can get to this comb. It shows it perhaps a little bit better. I can't get my camera in there. There's a stripe right up there. Okay. It's hard to get my camera back in here. I'm so sorry about that. I am really trying right now. But anyway... This being a clone of a rosicata, uh, it does have similar traits, although I would say this particular variety has shown to be more cold tolerant than Phyllostachys rosicata, the species. The other thing that sets it apart is the color reversal. Phyllostachys rosicata has a green comb with a yellow sulcus, whereas this has a yellow comb with a green sulcus. I personally like the yellow bamboos because, as we spoke about, um, as I spoke about in the last video with Harbin and Versa, uh, during the late evening or early morning when the sun is at a low angle, the sun shines in and hits these combs, um, just and shines them up so vividly that they look almost fluorescent. Now, the downside to that is that on the sunny side of the growth, the pattern does tend to fade out. So your sun, while it lights up and highlights and accentuates this, this vivid yellow color that's, that's so shiny in the sunlight, uh, on the other hand, it will fade out your green stripes up here. Um, so if you could position it where you could enjoy one side at one time of the day and the other side at another time of the day. <laughs> so you could take advantage of that sun hitting those yellow combs where they really just, they, they light up. They're just set on fire. They look amazing. I, I can't even describe it in words and I don't know that a camera could actually accurately pick it up because it's amazing. Um, but yet at the same time, you know, like I say, the sun does fade out that, that pattern. So if you could set it in a landscape where you could enjoy both sides, that would be even better. But um, it's not too bad of a size of a bamboo for our climate. We've got some pretty decent combs in there. Um, and this grove as a whole is, uh, well, it was until last winter. It got, it got top killed last winter. But until then, it was 18, 20 feet tall. It was, it was really good size. Um, I don't know if I can even get it all in a picture it's a good size grove. It has been there since um, the year 2000 and it's a really really big grove. It must be it must be probably close to 60 feet in diameter I'm gonna I'm gonna guess and we'll just walk around it here and we'll go over to the sunny side of it and I'll show you the difference in the pattern how I was talking about how the sun fades out that that patterning that green sulcus as the year progresses now when they first come out these yellow bamboos uh, where the sun hits them for the first few weeks it's incredible because you get actually a red hue on those shoots too where the sun hits it on the sunny side that yellow will turn brick red for a few weeks when those combs are new. So you get that added contrast too real early in the season. Then of course they mature out yellow. And as the season progresses, they they actually lose the patterning on the sunny side so that they become just solid lemon yellow. You can see this, let's see, you can see this sulcus here. And it is in fact gold instead of green. Same with this up here and like most of the yellow forms of Aurora you do occasionally get also a variegated leaf not often most of the leaves are green uh, but you do get the odd variegated here and there 
So it's got a lot of seasonal interest. You get, it's, it's end of January right now. So it's still green here in Northern Indiana even. Um, it could top kill though with the polar vortex uh, weather that they forecast for us, uh, saying that we could get uh, up to 60 mile an hour wind with the winter, with the winter storm that's moving in. So it could potentially top kill again, as you can see those tops behind me that got uh, top killed last year. All this green that you see was produced within six weeks last May. So it's pretty incredible the way it, the bamboo can recover after a freeze, uh, even this far north. So to freeze down in the winter and then produce that much green, all that green is entirely new. It, it was entirely new. We are now in January 2024. All of this green was produced during only a six week period in May of 2023, and it is still hanging in there. So it can rebound very quickly. And again, like with most of your phyllostachys, the rhizomes come out in the yard as far out from the, the edge of the grove right there, out, out this way, as far as the tallest comb is high. So if your grove is capable of producing 18-foot combs, it can also produce 18-foot rhizomes before it needs new growth, or green growth rather, on those rhizomes out in the yard to photosynthesize and further sustain those roots. So keep it mowed, and they won't, and the rhizomes won't advance any further than that distance of the, the height of the comb outward. Now if you let green growth come up out here, you're furthering it that many more feet. However far out, it is from the grove. So let's say you started with roots 18 feet out, but you kept it mowed, but you let a shoot come out, say 10 feet. So congratulations, you just added 10 feet more to your root zone. So now your roots can come out 28 feet because it's 18 feet from the furthest point of green growth that you have photosynthesizing to sustain, feed, and nourish those roots to facilitate further growth. So again, you can put in a barrier, you can mow it, um, you could trench it if you wanted to keep a smaller area of it. And there's lots of ways to handle it, but it is controllable. It's not a uncontrollable beast in the landscape. It is controllable as long as you know what you're doing and how to manage it. Uh, the main thing is that bamboo, like other chlorophyll producing plants, uh, requires photosynthesis to live and feed and sustain itself, produce its food. So if you cut off or limit its photosynthesis, that goes a long way in controlling it. It's um, definitely manageable. It's not unruly. Um, I could think of other phyllostachy species that are more um, more vigorous than here than, than Spectabilis, but it's a beautiful bamboo and I quite like it. And I hope you enjoyed the video about this bamboo and uh, you can decide whether or not, <laughs> as the case may be, if it's right for your landscape or not. Um, it might be, it might not. I'm not here to say, yes, you need to get this. I'm here to say, know the facts, know the facts. And so that you can know if it's the right plant for your landscape or not. So there are ways to handle it. And I was telling a gentleman earlier too that um, if you have acreage and farm equipment, you can actually disc around bamboo too to control it, uh, not plow. A plow will rip up those roots and drag them all over your property. Don't don't plow it. <laughs> Use a disc. Use a disc a couple times a year around it, um, specifically uh, during the summer and fall. Cuts off those new rhizomes as they're growing during that time of year. And uh, that limits its spread too. So that's an, yet another way to handle it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this visit with Phyllostachys rosicata spectabilis. And until next time, next time, Take care and have a great day.